We are coming to the end of our honeymoons and our couples are just getting ready to head back to reality. But before that happens, we have our final few days in paradise and a lot more interesting things happening between our couples today. I just wanted to start off with Henry and Christina. I have found the solution for them to have a successful relationship. They need to conduct the entire relationship on paddle boards. That was just an amazing, that whole scene was amazing. Henry just like cruising around on the paddle boards. He was all excited about being out there. He was trying to save his wife. He thought that he was about to be a widow. Like that was the, I think the happiest we've seen Henry, the most engaged we've seen Henry all season long. And the secret, just get him standing on a chunk of wood paddling around a lake. Um, you know, there were, these, this couple also had a couple, a few other interesting moments. And one thing that really sticks out to me is there was a one scene where they were sitting down for, I believe, their breakfast. And it cut to a shot where Christ, or one of the producers called Christina, Christine. And, you know, she kind of spat back at the producer in, uh, I would say, a very rude manner. Uh, she kind of, Anne Henry kind of described it as impatient, but let's be clear, it was rude and you know the look on henry's face it made it almost seem like her being rude to another person like physically hurt him he didn't like did not like that moment at all whatsoever and you know that could be something that becomes a major issue for that couple moving forward you know we've seen several moments with uh christina being a little bit rude to people even even her interaction with brett as much as as much as i think that uh you know it was a very simple question and brett handled things very poorly you know she she did approach that uh a little bit a little bit rudely um even though even though like i do side with her in that moment um and you know that could be could be an issue for them moving forward um you know, it's pretty clear that Henry is not going to be the one to just jump his wife's bones. It's just not going to happen. It's not who he is. He seems like he's very comfortable around Christina, getting more comfortable around her. But it doesn't seem like his personality to really be the aggressor. And I think we're going to have to hit a point where really Christina has to just accept that role in that relationship if she wants anything on the affection and romance side of things. Um, <clears throat> let's move right into Olivia and Brett. Uh, major red flags for this couple here today. You know, we've all been sitting at home waiting. You know, when are we going to see the real Brett? When are we going to see the real Brett? And I found it very illuminating today how emphatic uh, Brett seemed about the importance of communication, you know, having the ability to talk through everything. And then we immediately see him go into a situation where there's some confrontation and he just did not know how to handle it. You know, we had that whole uh, couple's dinner where all the couples were together and you know people casually asking you know what would you what would you rate your relationship and and uh brett spouting off with oh i would never dehumanize our relationship by giving it a number and you know everybody else is just kind of having fun with it saying how they feel and you know it was supposed to be just sort of a light-hearted fun thing like maybe a little bit of truth there as well to kind of coax out uh, how everybody's actually feeling about their relationships. And Brett just handled it terribly. And I did, I did enjoy really Christina really coming, coming after him on that and not really, not really just letting him off the hook with his uh, terrible answer. And we also had a little moment there where, you know, Brett was kind of snipping back at Christina 
and it looked like Henry was getting pretty mad at him. You know, it was just like one little camera shot, but it, it kind of caught me off guard a little bit that, you know, maybe if, if push came to shove, Henry would be the one sh doing the shoving and, and that, that kind of interests me. And I don't know if we'll, if we'll ever see that side of Henry again for the rest of the season, but just an interesting little note. But anyways, back to Olivia and Brett. And, you know, Brett just totally shuts down. Uh, even sitting there with the up other couples, when, or when it was, especially when it's just the guys, like it almost seemed like the other four guys were like, yeah, whatever. You want to have your little pout? Like we'll just, we'll just continue try to carry on our conversations without you. And that, that continued forward into uh, Christina and Henry uh, hanging out with Olivia and Brett and just how awkward that whole situation was. And then that spilled over into Olivia and Brett alone in their, in their, uh, their hotel room. And he just can't even give her a straight answer. And he's just spouting off all this nonsense about, well, like, what are you, what are you excited for when we go back to our life together? Well, my cat mowing the lawn, it's fine. And it was just like, who is this guy? Like, this isn't even the a-hole we saw on the bachelor party. This isn't that fake personality that we've seen all, all honeymoon long. This is like a totally different, bizarro person who doesn't really match along with any side of Brett we've seen so far. And then after this, this whole ordeal, and it looks real bad for their relationship, gets up in the morning and he's like, oh, by the way, Olivia, like I, I wasn't happy when I heard you say that you thought a relationship was a seven out of 10. It's like getting a D in a class. And I really don't feel like uh, the effort I've put into this is worth a D at this point. And then they talked for like two seconds and it was fine. And it was just like, you know, if you just tried to actually communicate that thing that you said was so important for relationships, this would have never been an issue and you would have gone to bed happy last night. All right, I'm, I'm over them. They're definitely not making it to the end of the season. I'm saying it right now, 0% confidence in that couple. I feel bad for Olivia, but let's leave them and move on. All right, next up, how about some Amelia and Bennett? Amelia and Bennett, they really inspired me for the next time that I go to a hotel make a gigantic pillow fort before I leave and then leave that disaster for housekeeping to deal with. What an ingenious idea. Like you always want to make a ridiculous fort like that, but you never want to clean it up. But they found the loophole. You do it at the hotel on your last night of the stay, and then you just walk out the door. It's, it's pure genius. Um, I really think that things are going well for Amelia and Bennett. It was uh, kind of cute, just really just seeing all their interactions today, even when Amelia just zonks out twice while Bennett was talking and Bennett just carried on talking. Uh, you know, it's just very cute and endearing. Uh, I do think that they are going to have some challenges once they're back in New Orleans, but out of all our couples, they definitely have one of the strongest connections and one of the best relationships for so far. And they're a couple, I'm always excited to see them when they come on the camera. Next up, let's talk about Karen and Miles. All season long, we've seen Karen searching for the negative in Miles. And often in life, when you approach anything with a negative attitude, looking for negative things, you are going to find them. It doesn't matter if you're going to a movie or you're getting married. If you want to see negative things, you will see negative things. No one in this world is perfect. And if you really want to find something wrong with somebody, you will. I really disliked how Karen handled Miles trying to open up about his depression with her it seemed like something that she was you know very unknowledgeable about not very open to and uh just seeing the looks on her face as miles was trying to open up to her was very illuminating you know you could 
you cut to the interview with Karen afterwards and she's basically saying like, well, I didn't, I didn't want a man with emotions. I wanted some big, tough, macho man because that's what a man is supposed to be. And that's really been her, her mindset all season long. And, you know, Miles is just trying to be open and honest with her and to not see that reciprocated, especially when he's opening it something about very, about something very deep and personal is very disheartening. Um, I'm not very high on this couple right now. I just don't think that Karen is in it at this mo point in time. That could always change. And uh, I, ho I hope for Miles because he seems like such a nice, great guy that I think many women out there would be ecstatic to have the opportunity to, t to date. And here Karen is, she just uh, is just not really that into it and not really reciprocating anything he is throwing out there. All right, lastly, we have Woody and Amani. This has been probably our strongest couple all season long. To, tonight, they happen to be our first couple that had sex this season. And, you know, I'm, I was very surprised that we're on the last day of the honeymoon. And it feels like in previous seasons, we've had seasons where I think every couple has had sex by the end of the honeymoon. You know, we have couples that are, are having sex on the first, second day of marriage. And this particular season, it has really felt like everyone is really taking things slow and Amani and Woody is our, our couple that has shown the most affection. They're the couple that seems like they're getting the closest with each other. And I don't think any of us were surprised that they're the first couple to sleep with each other. Uh, I really feel like they are doing a fantastic job. Uh, Woody, he almost seems like a changed man from the person we saw in the previews and before the weddings. Uh, you know, he's still the, he's still that happy joking person but he really seems like he is committed to Amani and committed to doing everything in his power to make things work now the question for them will be can Woody and Amani maintain this over the next seven weeks and through coronavirus as at some point this season we are going to hit coronavirus uh, to make it to the decision day and make that decision to stay married. I'm still very, very high on them. I do think they're the strongest couple. And uh, just sort of overall at this point, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm only really confident about two of our five couples, that being Amani and Woody and Amelia and Bennett. The other three couples, you know, I'm seeing way too many red flags at this point. I'm hopeful that uh, some of them can overcome these hurdles, but we will just have to wait and see. All right, everybody, that is going to wrap up my recap for this week's episode of Married at First Sight. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see all of you again next week.